really strong second half um, defensively, um, except for the one bust and play, the, the long pass. Um, is that a situation, just a, just a bad angle? Or w w what was Kevin's explanation for what went wrong on that play? Talking about the bad play? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, Fenn kind of got beat off the line of scrimmage, but he was making up ground. So he was going to play the hands. You know, really when the ball got caught, I was just hoping Kevin either didn't get a penalty or he made a play on the ball. Just he was on a bang bang, you know, and somehow, some way, he just misjudged the play and he actually clipped off Fentrell. And next thing you know, he's untouched in the end zone. So, a uh, really poor play by us. Um, Got to be better. Speaking of the second half and the good stuff, what did you guys do that kind of helped change up everything? And especially the D-line seemed like first half Miami had some success on the right side. What did you adjust there to deal with that accordingly? Yeah, there were a few runs in the first half that just, you know, whether we pressured or whether we played technique, like we either got up the field too far on the edge um, or got covered up inside. You know, it wasn't a schematic thing when a couple, a few balls hit. Um, you know, it was just really tightened up from the outside in. Um, and whether it was through pressure, whether it was through technique. And, you know, I thought in the second half, you know, I knew you know, we were going to try to recover that onside kick. And, you know, I felt really good about us getting it. And all of a sudden, when we didn't, it was just an opportunity for that sudden change. I think that really energized the guys, um, you know, to, to hold them to that field goal there. And, you know, so I just think that that was the start of it. And, you know, Every time we've needed them this year, they've stepped up. So, you know, I, I appreciate the work they put in uh, for all 60 minutes. But in that second half, we needed them, and they did a great job. With, with senior day this week, I know a lot of people, I feel like, talk about the transfers on your defense. But there are a few guys who, who've been through it and, and really committed early on. I guess guys like Kalen and Akeem, what have they meant? And what, what's Saturday mean for them to get to honor them like that? You know, I, I just think the strength of the story is just you know, the different ways that we brought people in, you know, and there's guys we've recruited that are now in their fourth year. Uh, there are guys that have been here and, you know, especially on defense, it's just, there's a, there's a great group of guys. You know, you mentioned Kalen, um, you know, we can go through them all in name, but, you know, there's not a lot of them that were super successful four years ago. And so to see, that kind of come full circle and to see the impact they have, not only on our defense, but our team. Um, you know, it just, it, it, it doesn't, it makes it pretty clear to everybody, you know, how far this program's come to see how far these individuals have come within the team. Um, and, you know, it just, you know, it'll be emotional day Saturday. Um, every, every Saturday is, but just knowing it's, it's their last time playing here in the stadium. So how did it change your philosophy in the final couple of minutes when their quarterback gets hurt? And then, uh, you know, Van Dyke, who we talked about last week because we, we thought he was going to play, you know he can sling it. And then he hits a couple of passes. Like, what are you thinking? What, does it change anything about what, the way you were going to defend them when nine comes on the field after uh, 17 got hurt? Yeah, it, you know, as the game was going, um, the formations, the run schemes, the protections were all the same. But their route concepts were very different um, with the Williams kid playing quarterback. Um, you know, the game he started against Clemson, you know, they ran the ball for over 220 yards and they didn't really ask him to do much, you know, and they could run the ball, you know. And so when we forced him to throw some, all the routes were just different. And so when Van Dyke came in and he threw that one sail route that Greedy almost picked off, it told me right away, okay, it's going back to the original plan of you know, with Van Dyke. So, you know, just those things, you know, I make, I don't make much of who's playing quarterback because sometimes it doesn't really matter. You got to find when it matters and how it matters, you know, because that's different for each team, it's different for each quarterback. Um, and so, you know, it just, yeah, it, it changed gears a little bit, but I don't force the players to change the gear. That's my job. And, uh, you know, it obviously was just basically close to that just final drive. So there wasn't a lot of time to bring them over and say, this is what's happening. They just got to know how we're, we're going to call the game. And this is what this call takes away. So it's my job to know that, give them the information, then they go and execute. 
when I asked uh, Coach Nor Norvell about Kalen's success as a blitzer, um, he gave credit to you for the scheme stuff. He gave credit to the, the guys up front for drawing the assignments that they draw. Um, but it seems like he's got a unique ability to, to come at a really high level of speed and also finish the play. Is that something that's he's developed and worked on, or is it, is it instinctual? Well, he's always had burst to the ball, you know. And I think as he's developed physically, and as he's developed as a football learner, you know, I think he takes those blitz timers, you know, because every offense has certain triggers that you can use to time things up. I think he listens to that. Um, I think he understands how we blitz in the protections. Um, I think. It also brings credit to our guys up front, you know, that there's a lot of attention paid to those four players. And so when you bring a guy off the line of scrimmage, um, some of it's just really good timing. And, you know, just, you know, I know, I know when we send him, he's going to go in the, in the right amount of speed. And, you know, he probably should have had another one back there too. And, you know, it was about the third time we brought it on the same pressure. I think finally the quarterback says, okay, I've seen this before. I got to go protect myself. And he gave him a little bit of, anticipation and the ball got away and Malcolm was there and that's when we got the holding call on AZ on the third down that you know should have been a stop um, but you know he's I can't say enough about where he's come how he's come and I actually told the defense on on Saturday you know one of the unique things is there's no secret we've gotten better because we've gotten better out there over the last four years I mean I can go and show a time lapse of a Tuesday practice to a Wednesday practice and just the consistency of the effort. But you walk out there on Tuesday and Kalen will be the first one sprinting out to each segment of practice. And, uh, you know, that's something that he bought into early and it's reaping the benefits. You mentioned practice and just whether it's Coach Storms in the off season or you guys during the season, you really wear these kids and down and practice and in these sort of situations. But just the fact of what you guys have been doing in the second half of games the last five, six weeks, like this growing kind of confidence. Have you ever been at this point as a coordinator, being this assured in who you guys are at that point of a crucial football game? Yes. Yeah. I mean, been coaching really good defense for a long time. And these guys are now developing the confidence. Um, and But the confidence is through the work because there is no secret to how this gets done. I think that's where it's showing up. Um, you know, there's no second guessing about this is the plan. Okay, now we got to adjust the plan or, you know, continue on the plan or now this guy's going in. And just the belief, um, you know, the recruitment's been important to develop or bring in enough players that you feel like you can push the competition, that you can push more players playing that will keep you fresher in the second half of the games or the second half of the season. I think that has something to do with it too. Uh, I think it goes to our players' intelligence too. You know, the more plays they run, the more bank you continue to build upon. And I think, you know, in the off season, you know, obviously we do a great job with planning the structure and the workouts. But the way the rules are now, you can meet with these guys throughout the season a lot with some football, and you can just build some fundamental knowledge uh, that they can draw back upon. I think they just pick things up quicker now, and they can use that. And it doesn't mean you're calling maybe a necessarily different game all the time. But their ability to take the information that you're giving them, what the offense is giving them, and process that in real time to go react and make plays, I think that's what you're seeing. And uh, a combination with maybe adjustments or whatever that is for the players, coaches, the program on both sides of the ball. So, Coach mentioned it a little bit earlier, but when did you find out that Emery was going to be the starting quarterback and how much did that affect the game plan? Um, well, I mean, I went out to watch warm-ups, and he was throwing the ball to the student manager that was catching the ball, and the other quarterbacks were throwing, playing catch with each other. That usually tells you that the starting quarterbacks get somebody else catching the ball for them. So that's when I kind of figured it out. Uh, Jarian got to be, I guess, the, or Jarian got to be the hero uh, with the, the, the interception at the end of the game. I know he's a guy who's kind of like a few other guys, bounced around, had a few different roles, and, and kind of is one of those guys who's really, I guess, what do you think's been the biggest difference for him this year? It feels like he's played a consistently high level. And I mean, he uh, very talked last year after the Florida game about how it feels like he's totally changed the perception of how people view him. Yeah, I mean, he's, I've always believed in him. And, you know, 
every time he'd start to get some momentum, there'd be an injury, you know, and then the setback and, you know, how that went. And I think, you know, just a few years ago, he really made up his mind that, listen, things are going to happen that I can't control, but regardless of what it is, I'm going to show up every day and try to be my very best. And that's what he's done a great job of. And, you know, just even what he's done this year, uh, you know, I think he's got great corner skill. He's done what's best for the team. We moved him in a nickel, and he's grabbed that. He played some dimes Saturday night, too, because there were some 10 personnel. And, you know, just to see him go and take that ball away late in the game, um, but also to hold who I think is a pretty good slot receiver to no catches between him and Greedy, you know, it just, you know, he is so dialed in, not just on what he's doing, but what we're doing. And, you, you just see his intensity on Thursday walkthroughs. Um, if the scout guy doesn't give the right route, and he'll look at me and be like, did this change? I thought this is how it's going to go. I said, J.W., he just he ran it wrong. You know, and, and then he'll look at him and say, you got to run that correctly and go and coach him. So think of that and where that's come from, right? And, you know, what he does on special teams, what he does on defense, um, it just shows proof if – you recruit the right people, regardless of success early or failure early, stick to it, stick to the plan, work hard at it, uh, understand there's going to be ups and downs, stay consistent, um, trust yourself, and go to work. And that's what he's done. And now he's one of the better DBs in the country. Uh, I think it's Saturday's game, Xavier Rhodes, Brian McFadden, some of those guys were out there on the sideline in previous games. I mean, you've had Derek Brooks, obviously, and people like that. And then the Saturday, again, the 2013 team coming back. Um, did you realize, I guess, when you guys came here that, like, how big of a part of that was going to be part of being, in terms of, you know, I mean, obviously, New Florida State's legacy, but just what it means to have, for these current players to have those guys coming back and those relationships? Yeah, I mean, I knew just being a, a, a football, um, being a main part of my life, you know, obviously, when I, the first day I got here, you know, and you walk in and you know about the history, you know, you know about the names. And, you know, maybe my second day here is when I went out in that field and Coach Andrews called me and said, hey, I'd love to meet you. Um, and obviously Odell was already here. Um, Ron was already here. And then maybe my third day, I meet with all the bunch of the players just in one-on-one -on -one meetings. I walk in the defensive staff room and somebody had grabbed me and said, hey, we have some guys that want to meet you, and it's Derek Brooks in Shade Tree. And so, you know, I saw them and saw, you know, the linebacker room, and, you know, I said, wow, that pretty cool. Um, but, you know, it was just, you know, to see Derek on the sidelines sometimes, uh, obviously to, we coached to Kalen, so that happened a little bit. Um, but talk to T-Buck and just, I mean, to even go through the names. You know, I met Timmy Jernigan. You know, it just there's so many names uh, out there um, now. And, and you feel, now that we've been here, you know, going on the fourth year, you feel very connected and invested. Um, and you feel like you are a Seminole. And you feel the connectivity of these guys. And, um, you know, obviously success brings all the excitement back, right? But I think it goes beyond that. Uh, just be, and I think it's because of how Coach Bowden ran the program. You know, these guys were invested more than wins and losses. You know, they didn't check in and then check out and go on to the next endeavor. You know, they come back or, you know, they support the team. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's not a secret. Recruiting is going to go really well around here because we're winning. But it's also going to go really well because of the people that have come through here in the past. People see what they are doing post-football and how they carry themselves. And uh, I think the allure of what Florida State University is goes beyond the football field. And I think – the biggest seller of that and product is the players that have that have come out of here. A few other players who have been here since the beginning for, for you guys, uh, Renardo, Akeem, Dennis, I think that's everyone. Can you talk about their, their growth individually and, and their progress as well during their, their time with you? Man, you could spend a lot of time on each one, you know, and um, you know, just to see what Renardo has gone through, you know, to – when I got here, we were at a shortage at safety. We were a shortage at a couple spots. And to move him, then the injuries that he had to go through, and then, you know, to make the decision moving back to corner last year, and um, just to see his toughness and grit show through. And, you know, he's always been an ultra competitor. Um, just unbelievable job. And you, you mentioned Akeem. I mean, Akeem's similar road. You know, we 
was a safety when we got here. We, we moved him back to corner. Um, he really had a tough year coming off of an injury. Um, after a bunch of you know, studies and information and talking, we moved back to safety, and, and now he's playing really good football. And you know, he's going to be a starting DB on a team that's won back-to-back 10-plus seasons. You know, and um, you know, we talked about J Dub. You know, Dennis Briggs, who again, I mean, you talk about the group that you just talked about, B. And you know, there's been position changes, there's been injuries to all of those guys. Um, there's been a lot of failure. You know, and to see them now climbing towards the pinnacle of their game on a really good team, you know, I just what I am probably the most excited about. Yes, their success. But what that's going to do for them a year, five years, ten years down the road, when they can look upon this and when things come up, they can stand up and know they've been through things before. And they've come out the other side with success. And so I think that's the narrative to that group. Um, And they've been huge building blocks um, on what this looks like right now. Thanks, guys. See you guys.